I, I first of all, I thank uh, Professor Chandak sir for inviting me in this uh, uh, wonderful different kind of uh, CME and Ortho TV also for bringing up this type of subject, actually very useful to the uh, orthopedic colleagues. So my topic is improving with the best retractor. So objective of my talk, I will be speaking mainly on the two things. What is a self-retaining retractor and the home and retractors? But there will be two slides which I feel very useful on headlight and my failed bike. So self-retaining retractors, if you see, it's a you know it's a simple machine. They take uh, efforts of uh, people. You know, see if you keep on retracting with a simple L retractor, then you get tired, you get muscle cramps. While the uh, self-retaining retractor works as a machine, uh, it is it is there are various names of it. But one of the common name which we speak is mastoid hemostatic retractor. So by the name of it, it gives, you know, when you put your self-retaining retractor, it automatically causes hemostasis. It reduces your effort, efforts and it gives a constant retraction. So in a self-retaining retractor, if you see, there are uh, many different parts and uh, we will see how different uh, retractors are useful in clinical settings also. So. Uh, 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 Tanna sir said, I keep on buying instruments everywhere. So when I when I ask my OT assistant, give me my all retractor, self-retaining retraction and home and spike, it was like, you know, it was Dukan. So there are so many things. Sometimes I, you know, go and buy the instrument and when I go uh, back to my um, uh, hospital, see that the same thing was there. But it is very useful when you have a lots of instruments with you. It makes your job very easy. Uh, I, I now see how we can apply the self-retaining retractor into various clinical settings. So the commonest one is the Chanli's retractor, which we use. It gives you wonderful exposure. You don't have to use uh, handled retractors, and it gives hemostasis also. In the spine, the small microdiscectomy, or what we commonly call as a Ramani's retractor, is very useful. And but if you see this uh, uh, image there, if you have this, you know, black coated. It is very useful because whenever we are doing surgery, the light which you know reflects from your instrument. I have one which is reflecting light, so it you know keeps you it disturbs you. So whenever you buy this uh, microdiscectomy retractor, it is better if you buy non-reflecting one. Then this is a solder retractor which I specifically use in a small mini incision PCL surgery, which I do with a very unique way of gastrocnemia splitting. And this technique was recently described by my friend, uh, Dr. Jigdes Pandya, in one of the seminar. This is my technique, which I'm doing for some six years. And there I use by this solder retractor, which I bought it specifically for solder. But now I'm not using it for solder, but I use it for a mini incision PCL, where you can do your PCL fixation with some two, three stitches. In calcaneum also, I put my self-retaining retractor. Sometimes people feel that in a calcaneum, if you use it, then it can hurt your this lower uh, skin. But what I do is I put a subcutaneous K wire and my self-retaining retractor will rest into it and the upper jaw will be resting on uh, the K wires which are there. So it will not be resting on the soft tissue, but the hard tissue. And you can see this much beautiful vision in calcaneum also. In the lateral tibial plateau, often we see there is a contained depression where the wall is uh, not broken. What we can do is a split open the wall this retractor is retracting soft tissue while this lower small self-retraining retractor is retracting the uh, book open part of the lateral tibial condyle. Then you can do the surgery and you don't need assistant to keep on doing the things. In a distal radius also, this kind of fracture, if you put these two retractors, you can see the wonderful exposure of this. And how to select? If So you should have a different uh, you know, size of the uh, self-retaining retractors because every uh, space is a different space. You can have a very small to you have a very large and then you can have a galpy also. And this, all the orthopedic surgeon, this having this channelist retractor is must uh, in everybody's armamentarium. So now if we look at the design uh, types. We, when we, you know, buy, we don't know what is going to be useful and what not. And sometimes when we apply it on a clinical setting, then it sometimes it is, you know, slip off. So if you see this A1, it looks very nice, but it is straight one. So usually whenever you buy this straight one, the A1, it's come out of your wound. So it is always better you use one with the one. Another thing is, you have a look at the tip, 
how the flanges are there so the flanges which are actually slanted inside tends to slip away out of your wound so it is always better you do it you know at the right angle or sometime reverse to it or you can manually do it if you have this instrument with you you can manually do it because otherwise this this a1 will keep on slipping out of your wound this b1 is actually stays inside the wound so sometime what what happens the spring of this self retaining retractor breaks so you feel that it is of no use so what you can do this is a very simple trick you can uh, remove the rubber ring from your gloves and make you know multiple circular of this this will hold the spring and this is autoclavable too so this is very useful if you have some condom self retaining you can simply do this jaw this thing and it will be very useful to you so uh, some some points on a care of retractor you should not be kept open when it is not used so the spring is not uh, loosened and you should be uh, uh, lubricated often at the joints and should not be kept with the load over it to prevent the deformation of it now i'll be speaking on the second part of my talk which is homan retractor or a bone spike or a lever what we say so anatomy if you look see there is a tip there is a blade and there is a shaft so all the homan retractors or the bone levers actually work on the principle of this you know simple physics uh, lever arm principle where it it uh, lessens your efforts so whenever again uh, it's also i have like you know on my opni dukan Yeah, uh, those those many retractors, but every uh, retractor is useful in different different clinical setting. So there are different type of uh, size, say material also. Usually we get with the metal steel, but then there are some resolution retractors also, which are also there. But the resolution are some you know uh, form of uh, uh, say aluminum. So what happens that if you force it, sometimes it tends to bend, and there are some carbon fiber imported uh, also are available. i'll give you some clinical settings where very typically what we usually get is a one intertrochanteric fracture with a sag then uh, we put your incision at the site of entry of your pfn screw then put this broad broad tip strong uh, homan uh, retractor at the entry to the neck of that so it will it will strongly depress your uh, femoral neck sometime even after doing that you will not get your shaft reduction you use other homan which goes down from the shaft and then then it will elevate your shaft to get a nice reduction so there, there, that's the one use of uh, homan retractor in a very uh, routine clinical setting another case what we uh, we get sometime you know neck in type of deformity which is very common with the iliopsoas interposition there you require this sharp type of homan goes inside the fracture then you reverse it and you get a reduction very easily another thing in some subtrochanteric fracture when we feel that we want to do encerclage wiring so what happens whenever you are doing encerclage to pass your instrument below the linea aspera is very difficult so there is a special uh, passer instrument with the synthesis which is costly but if you look at this homan retractor homan spike it is something like you know periosteum i pass it first remove the you know linea from there and then i will pass my wire passer to make my job very easy another we very routinely use this set of retractor for thr very important not whenever we are using you know anterior retractor to uh, this anterior vestibular wall we have to you know release the labrum go as as close to the bone as possible because close to that is a uh, femoral neurovascular tkr also we uh, use lot of form and retractor uh, there is new type of retractors which are available with this striker so known as a pro uh, retractor for vestibular surgery which are carbon fiber one there are some drilling slots for them and there is a fiber optic light source also with that and there is some suction tip also in a calcaneum also sometime when there is a uh, medial wall is not being reduced you can use this homan spike this one iit v image i took it from uh, dr mahesh soni uh, so this is how you can actually uh, reduce the overriding of your medial wall another uh, the same the homan spike which i spoke about uh, if you are doing hto what happens when you are worried about your saw blade uh, injuring to the posterior structure so these homan spike goes absolutely behind your uh, osteotomy cut and if you can notice in iit we made there is another spike which is very faintly seen which is a patellar uh, tendon retracting spike but it is a radiolution so the above one is a radiolution which is actually hardly seen in the iit images also 
so whenever you are selecting uh, your omen spy you need to see that your tip is very strong actually tip in a cross section if you see should be thicker when you are otherwise with some use it tip gets deformed so once this tip is deformed it can injure the inside structure and it can sometime you know it uh, comes out of your uh, the uh, bone because of it. so danger of also uh, retractor also you should know so whenever you use uh, self retaining retractor we have to it can damage your muscles which are continue being retracted it can damage the now if the tips are touching so the commonest one if wherever you are uh, putting your chanli retractor then you need to see that your sciatic nerve is not uh, into that also whenever you don't uh, you are not working on the field you should release your self retaining retractor in between the homan retractors there are reports that it can damage to the nerve or the vessels which are uh, at the opposite end of your field now only two slides this is a bicyclers headlamp which i would suggest everybody to buy because these if you go and had a you know surgical headlight it it is going to cost you very much but if you take this bicyclers headlamp which is available in varieties in amazon and all the flipkart and everywhere which starts from some 6700 to 2000 rupees but it's you know whenever you are working in a very narrow field your you know over the top light cannot go inside or sometime your light has gone then this is a very rescue thing and i am using it very regularly you can see that it this much illumination it can give whenever you are working so this is the uh, my hands which are illuminated you can see that and one instrument which i i am included why because i don't want my colleague to spend on that because this is a serrated owl which is very famously you know uh, displayed at many of the stall but these are absolutely useless yes. instrument because there is a no tip which is cutting and you you know over the cannula cannulated uh, wire you cannot cut it with this tip and also that this series do not tube around that it will keep on injuring your muscles around so uh, whenever you see this instrument please don't buy it yeah thank you mm -hmm.